What's happening, guys? Johnny Pickleball here with Inside the Lines. Another great episode coming your way. We have a great match to talk about and break down. Ben Johns going down. He goes down to Jame Martinez Vic at the Veolia Desert Ridge Open, presented by the O oh Snap Pickling Company. This matchup is filled with a very ebb and flow thing. Great momentum swings back and forth where Ben had the momentum early. Jame then had the momentum in the second game. Then they were kind of neck and neck. And then all of a sudden, Jame catches fire. So some of the things that we're going to look for, let's go through the takeaways really quickly. And let's start with Jame Martinez Vic first. And so Jame was able to not only have great foot speed, but just great movement overall to his forehand side. You're going to see that as we go through the video. He also has a very crafty cat and mouse game that we're going to look for. And so with Ben Johns, some of the things that we're going to look for from him were obviously his two-handed backhand being well disguised throughout the match. The fact that he then missed returns, missed serves, uh, were kind of a hindrance to him, especially in game two and three. And then also with Ben Johns, we're going to look for um, his net coverage. So Ben was able to have great net coverage throughout the match. One of his big at attributes for men's pro singles. But this is the men's quarterfinals that we saw Jame take it and move forward and upset Ben Johns. So let's dive in. Let's just see how he did it. Okay, so the first point that we're going to get into, I'm going to go ahead and run it. You're going to see Jame Martinez Vic able to play some cat and mouse. So let's go ahead and run it and talk about it at the same time. You're going to see Ben serve Jame come in with a nice deep return. And there you're going to see Jame bring Ben Johns in and then go behind Ben after he, Ben does, tries to go with a cross court flicker, you know, or even just a cross court dink to try to move the ball around. So Jame able to not only bring Ben Johns into the cat and mouse game, but then just set it up to go behind him. You're gonna see this as it sets the tone for kind of the, not just this game, but kind of the match. You'll see other, other examples of that. But Ben obviously normally is gonna have people push the ball back to him. And then he's able to create himself from back at the baseline. Jame electing to bring Ben in and use his own cat and mouse uh, foot speed with that to, to try to gain advantage. So let's go ahead and get to the next point. Okay, so here in this next clip, we're gonna see that foot speed that we were talking about, Jame's forehand, able to create such heavy topspin shots. Let's go ahead and take a look. Here's Jame again with another heavy, deep serve. Feels very confident and moving to his right, able to then come across the ball. Little circus shot in there, right? He did used to train with Rafa Nadal, so maybe you learned that shot from him. But you can see that foot speed to his forehand side, the ability to just move so quickly to it and create shape and get ahead of that ball in order to kind of do what he wants with it at that time. So catch Ben a little bit late to coming into the kitchen and and even covering a little bit more so great job by Jame able to create that foot speed um, and even then you know we'll see what he can do with it as we go forward okay so in this point we're already at 7-4 Ben Johns here in game one so he's starting to feel a little bit of momentum here and so he's what we're gonna see is kind of that takeaway of his two-handed backhand so the point before this i just want to set it up for you is that he was able to drop and so you can kind of start to catch your opponents leaning one way or the other when you set it up the point before ben's very good at this and so you're going to see i'm going to go ahead and roll it with ben johns ready to serve here seven four feeling a little bit of momentum there's the two-handed backhand down the line and then Jame leaning to his right, Ben's able to go cross court with him by disguising his backhand, taking it back fully and kind of keeping his, his body looking the exact same. Very good at disguising his backhand, whether he's gonna roll it or drive it. So Ben had the option there to either roll or drive on the back, on the cross court side after setting it up by going down the line first and catching Jame leaning, making it all look the same. So we're gonna look for him to do some more of that stuff as this game goes on. He felt really great in this first game. Let's move on to the next point. Okay, so in this point, this is game point now. Ben's already had the momentum kind of going in his favor. He's hitting his shots. Jame had missed some returns in game one, which kind of obviously any missed returns that you have, whether it's three, four, five in singles is going to just absolutely be detrimental to you trying to be successful. So Ben in this point, I'm gonna go ahead. One of his biggest things that he was able to do in game one is have a heavy serve. I will go ahead and, and run this for you. 
Um, and with that open stance now with the new serve rule, you just see a, a missed return by Jean May. Kind of he missed the last couple anyway. And so, but that that open stance, especially with the new serve, new serve rule that Ben is actually trying to you know utilize because we have to, is that his closed stance was making it a little bit more difficult to not have the ball raised up. So he's doing more of that open stance so that his hips and shoulders can still go forward and utilize the weight of that to push the ball forward deeper into the court, which is uh, gonna be great use for him in game one as he's able to take it. Let's get right to game two. All right, so we're gonna pick it up here in game two. So Ben already feeling a little bit of uh, you know control here. He already took game one, 11-4. He's already up 1-0 here. This is where Jame, you're gonna see that forehand movement like we talked about earlier, uh, where he's able to not only just stick the volleys, but stretch really well. Let's go ahead and just run it and then we'll go through it. Ben with a nice deep serve once again. Jame coming in, stretching with the forehand on the foot speed. And again, one more time. That stretch may look very simple to do, very difficult with the ball that Ben is actually placing and shaping and dipping. And so you'll see it even on the replay that they put in there, how he's able to guess correctly and then stretch even further to that forehand side. He's so quick to be able to move to that forehand side on the volleys that even Ben's passing shots uh, are gonna be very difficult for, for him to do against Jame Martinez Vic. So great, great job there from him. Let's get right to the next point as we see Jame do his thing. Okay, so here we are in game two. Let me set the stage for you. We're at 5-3 now. Jame started to have a little bit of run here. He started to have a couple shots that just went his way. But we're going to see that forehand movement once again take place. Let's go ahead and run it. Here's the big serve from Jame. And then the backhand down the line, net cord. Ben able to cover. Covers the net extremely well. But then Jame moving right once again with his forehand, able to create with that passing shot, almost like a little circus shot once again. But, you know, Ben obviously electing to keep going to that forehand, trying to space him out a little bit. But Jame so quick to that forehand side. I'm actually a little more surprised that Ben didn't go down the line more and try to pin that backhand, even though Jame's backhand creates a lot of spin on it. But I think Ben would have had a better job having the ability to defend against that than just continuously going to that forehand, which was on fire, especially starting to get into game two and even pushing into game three. But let's just get to the next point. Okay, so in this next point, we're at seven, four now. Jame started to have a little bit more momentum go his way. And on this one, you're gonna see, let's go ahead and run it. You're gonna see Jame actually hit uh, some great cat and mouse uh, shots here. Let's go ahead and run it. Ben with another serve here, Jame coming in. Nice deep return. So and there it is right there. I'm going to go ahead and pause it. So when Ben does the drop, uh, normally he's he's used to people coming in or, or used to people uh, pushing the ball back to Ben so that he has the ability to create from the baseline and kind of dictate terms as he moves his way forward. Jame goes in a different direction here. He goes ahead and drops this ball, bringing Ben in the kitchen on a full sprint, trying to make a decision on what to do with it by the time he even gets there, which is difficult enough, number one, just to get there, but then two, to go ahead and place the ball somewhere to be ready for the next ball. So Jame brings him in, Ben comes roaring in, puts the ball across court, Jame reading it nicely and just putting the ball away very easily. So he drops, you'll see it on the replay again, elects to just keep Ben coming in forward on the move and, and really dictating that cat and mouse point on his terms. This will lead him to go ahead and win game two, Jame Martinez Vic, and let's get to game three, let's do it. Okay, so here we are, game three. It's already gone back and forth a little bit. In the first few points, it was just missed serves, missed returns. You know, one of the things from, from game two that happened towards the end there with Jame being able to win that game 11-5 was that Ben Johns actually started to miss a lot more returns. And so that, that obviously, as we talked about with Jame in the first game, missing returns. Ben missing returns in the second game. So game of runs, Ben was able to carry the momentum in game one and take that 11-4. Jame able to have the momentum in game two able to take it 11-5, and now here we are in game three, all kind of, you know, back and forth we go. But on this point, you're gonna see Jame once again, elect to bring Je Ben Johns forward versus pushing the ball back to him. Let's go ahead and run it just to set the stage for you. So here we go. Ben Johns to push it in. There's Jame pushing the ball back once. And there it is on the drop. You're gonna see, go ahead and pause there. So the ball that comes in, Ben kind of lofts it back. And Jame, instead of just creaming that ball, 
decides to bring Ben Johns in on his terms. He drops the ball instead. So Ben obviously is, is going to get there. It wasn't a, a crazy drop shot, but let's go ahead and keep running it, you know, but brings him in so that he can start to dictate the cat and mouse point. Jame trusting his skills there to go ahead and have that foot speed that we talked about as well. Part of the major takeaways of this match, but utilizing his foot speed against Ben Johns, but had to get him into that cat and mouse point first to do so. So instead of going ahead and just creaming this ball that he had the opportunity for, drops it, brings Ben in, wins the cat and mouse, cat and mouse point once again. So things to look for if you ever have to play Ben Johns, maybe starting to look to, to drop and bring him in versus pushing the ball back and letting Ben create. So great job by Jame here. And uh, let's see where this game goes. Okay, so on this point, Jame is still down 3-4. But this is going to kind of start to set the tone for the rest of the game. He has a really crafty scramble point here. Let's go ahead and run it and we'll go through it. But you'll see the big, uh, relatively big serve there by Jame. Comes in mid-court, tries to pass Ben. Ben going around him. And then Jame able to come back on a crazy scramble point. So what's really cool about this point as it goes on and on and on, and I'll pause it there a little bit, is that Jame is able to use that foot speed not only to his forehand, but always to his backhand. And he continues to try to go behind Ben Johns versus trying to go down the lines all the time. But he's mixing up his placement a lot, trying to keep Ben off balance, using short angles versus trying to just hit the winner, hit the winner once. He's trying to make Ben move to set himself up for even better shot on the next ball and utilizing his strength of foot speed to do so. Ben makes assumptions based on patterns and assumes that he's gonna go passing shot, try to go down the line. Jame able to go cross court back, which worked out very well in his favor to set him up for the next ball and then able to put it away. At this point, the foot speed of Jame is in full swing right now. And uh, let's get to the next point because you're gonna see Jame start to catch fire here at the right time. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pick it up here at 7-4. Jame's already started to rattle off a few points. One of the big takeaways from him in this match was being able to catch fire at the right time in game three. These two players have played each other before and have gone to three games, but Jame catching fire at the right time. Let's go ahead and see an example of it. He's already up seven, four. So here we go. Um, relentlessly gonna start driving the ball at Ben Johns with the forehand, the backhand, and then down the line, painting the corner or in that line area, just doing a great job. And at this point, I show this point because the rest of the way here, now leading eight, four, it gets very interesting for Ben John. So let's get to it. The match point that had Jame Martinez Vic upset the world number one. Okay, so this is match point. Now it's not anything too crazy. This is just a missed return, but I'm gonna go ahead and run through it for you. And why I wanna show you this match point is because Ben Johns has missed the last few points just on return. So let's go ahead and run it. Match point, he had caught fire, Jame Martinez Vic. Has another heavy, heavy serve with a lot of spin that's really deep, missing the return, really putting the pressure on Ben Johns, who at the last one not only missed that return, but missed the last three. So those missed returns, missed serves from Ben Johns, really hurting him throughout this match. Jame Martinez Vic able to use his foot speed, use that cat and mouse uh, ability, and bring Ben Johns in on his terms be able to move forward into the semifinals where as we saw Jame got to go to the finals and have an amazing run throughout Desert Ridge before losing to Federico Stackstrude. Um, great job by him. Ben John's going to need to look for the kind of go back to the labs, maybe on some footwork on some stuff. But, you know, I'm sure he's going to be just fine as we progress through the year. So thank you for joining us here. The Violia Desert Ridge Open presented by the Osnap Pickling Company. What a great tournament. What a great match. I'm sure we'll have another Inside the Lines coming at you here very soon. Johnny Pickleball, we'll see you.